Hello guys, thank you for joining. Um, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and holiday time. Um, I'm me personally, I'm glad that things are getting kind of back to normal. Um, so, you know, I don't like a break in routine. Um, I'm a creature of habit. Um, so, a disclaimer, I got sent two decks from Rockpool to review, um, well, to do a walkthrough of. Um, this first one is the African Gods Oracle. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, it's by a guy called Diego Di Oshosi, Oshoshi, I think, uh, illustrated by Bruno Locha. Um, it arrived yesterday and I took the liberty of reading the guidebook last night so I could give like a fair walkthrough and I kind of knew like little bits what I was talking about. And so it comes in a lovely two part box, um, kind of textured like glossy on the front, different to the normal standard rock pool. And there's also um, a little bit of text on the back um, about life choices and yeah it's it, it's really nice i mean i do like it um i've done a couple of car pulls with it um but i want to show you guys like you know the bare bones of what the deck is about um before i show you the cards um so basically um you get this guidebook and it's written by um diego and he explains all about the african diaspora you know reaching out from africa with slavery to the americas um and it's a really informative book obviously if you want to know more about santeria and um oh what's it called candoble um you'll have to do your own research i mean i think this is a really good uh, starting point I am not uh, well versed in African spirituality, only what I've been told by B, of a called Sunflower, um, Queen Oset and Aminat as well. So, you know, you'll have to excuse me if my pronunciation of some of the deities are wrong. Um, um, because, as I said, like, you know, um, this is not my thing. It's completely out of my comfort zone. And so I'm going to do the best I can. So basically, you've got an introduction about the African gods and goddesses and, you know, um, the different spiritual traditions and the Orishas, obviously. And uh, what I did like was uh, Diego says for the last 20 years, he's been practicing and studying African based spirituality and its diasporic traditions such as Cuban Santeria, Haitian Voodoo and Brazilian Candoble. Their historical, historical and spiritual matters and the ways this African ancestry tradition became open and widespread to all black and non-black people in the Americas while keeping its ancestral power and identity, recreating African-based communities all over the world and gathering people of all colours in the fight against racism and religious intolerance. And then you go about um, his own experience where his grandparents... Um, you know, used to hang on. Da, 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 da. His grandmother took him to a babalosha or priest um, who, with the correct prayers, herbs and rituals, gave his life and destiny into the hands of the Orishas. And then he kind of like followed the path. And then in 2010, um, he was initiated into the Orishas and became a religious priest, dedicating his life to spread their word across the world. And he's also led an Orisha temple in Brazil. And so I think he has got a, a rough idea, I should say, in what he's talking about. Um, I haven't seen a deck like this before, especially not mass market anyway. Um, and I think it's nice because it's kind of introducing people to other belief systems all throughout the world. Um... And as I said, I mean, I've got some books, obviously, recommended to me by some friends of mine. Um, and I find them quite enjoyable to read. I love reading about different kind of religions anyway and different belief systems. So I'm always open to new ideas. So with this one, um, as I said, it was completely out of my comfort zone. And, and I thoroughly enjoyed reading the guidebook. Um... So what you basically get is the 16 major Odus and their names. Um, so you've got the 16 and out of all the 16, you've got a positive and a negative aspect of that particular one. And the, the, these 16 are the main ones used, apparently so. Um, 
you know, it does say each Odu can bring messages from different Orishas who relate to these energies. In ancient Africa, there were more than 701, each of them having its own regional and or familiar cult. Through the slavery of African people all of the Americas, they and their spiritual beliefs spread in what's known as the African diaspora. And these deities were gathered in 16 major Orisha families or groups worshipped all of the Americas. And so, obviously, I mean, I didn't know any of this, so it's nice to find out. And it'll be great to see people's comments as well, um, you know, to kind of, like, give us, you know, a little bit more information um, if somebody's um, well-versed in the African spirituality. And so, um, you can go before you, it says before we begin, which I tried last night, um, you can go onto uh, Diego's website and you can enter a code um, and basically you can get a birth chart. Well, the link didn't work, but I think it's probably because the deck's not released yet. It's February release, so maybe that's something kind of upcoming. Um, I hope so anyway, because it'd be great to see like what um, he has to say. And so there you've got how to use the cards um, and traditionally predictions and fortune telling through the Odus are made with two different oracles um, and represent the voice of the Orishas. Both measures, methods can only be performed by priests and priestesses initiated in the Orisha religions and require years of study as well as several magic rituals. Um, and it's all about carry shells. Um, so what I would like to know is if that's the case, how come it's a mass market deck? So that is one kind of question I have got, you know. Um, is it kind of respectful to kind of like use um a deck maybe to kind of got information from the Orishas if you don't kind of follow that tradition? Um but that is the only problem I have got so far. Um I have been looking, obviously, the deck's made up of 36 cards, which I said, you know, positive and negative. And there's four cards, which are moon cards. Um, and I did a reading last night, which kind of inspired me to come on today and, yeah, uh, give you guys a walkthrough of this. So we've got, first of all, we've got the one card reading and, you know, and then we've got the three card reading and then the five card reading cross as well and everything's explained in full details uh, across the guidebook so you've got as i said the positive aspect and then you have got the negative aspect and what i do like about it if people see fit and want to do this um you've got an empowering ritual to add some more weight to the card and then you've got a shadow meditation when it's in its negative aspect and that goes throughout the deck for all cards here um so each card is explained in full details you've got keywords and you've got the region to the orishas um lots of lots of information as well as i said you know i'm not gonna like you know say that's not right because i'm no situation to argue um because i know nothing about um what the guy has actually said about any of it in here anyway and at the end of the book you have got um the moon face cards explained in detail a bio of diego about his work um you know everything he does about his books he's published a bio a little bio about the illustrator and obviously their socials there and their email contacts there um i did go as i said i did go on diego's uh website last night um a word of warning for anyone who doesn't speak portuguese you have to translate it there is a translate button at the top um which was a bit of a faff to be honest with you but like i mean after a few minutes i did get it bang on so uh now i'm gonna go on to the cards so here we go we have 32 cards um they are edged in this beautiful kind of black matte color and the cardstock is lovely as well really nice cardstock like a, a matte um very durable and you can tell the four moon cards are a creamy color on the back um so there's no mistaking those so what you do is you take these from the deck um and then you use one of the cards um which i'll just show you in a bit first of all i want to show you the cards and the artwork which i absolutely love um all the negative aspects are in this kind of like brownie kind of coffee color 
and all the cards with colour on are the positive aspect. Um, so, you know, you'll be able to see that straight away, whether you've pulled like a positive or negative card just by the colour of the front of the card. So what I love is the artwork. Um, it's kind of like simple yet powerful at the same time. Um, it reminds me a lot of some of the cards remind me of the Voodoo Tarot, um, which is one of my all time favorite decks. Um, and I just love that, you know, sometimes like when an illustration is so simple, it can, you know, kind of keep the integrity of the, the you know, the whole card. Um, so as you can see, this is kind of the similar artwork that you get all throughout the deck. There's nothing jarring about it, you know, everything flows quite beautifully. Um, and this is what I like about it. And, you know, the colourful, you know, the colour cards are very colourful as well. And there is a little phrase on the bottom, which gives you the basic kind of meaning of the card. And then you can look into the guidebook for a more in-depth, um, explanation. I adore that card. Um, and so each one, so you let me find the other one. Um, so basically, let me just find number one again. So, what you'll see is exactly what I mean when I find the card, anyway. So, I'm looking for a brown number one. Uh, da -da. You what? So I ain't going to be able to find it. 18. Or it's probably the last one. 8, 2, 13. I'll come across it. Um, I ain't going to stress. So there you go. And so each card has got um, the little text on the bottom, which is helpful uh, in giving you like a, a quick meaning. And you've got like number 11, uh, Abara. Happiness is the greatest wealth the gods can give us. And then you've got like things like no harm can hurt those who live in peace with themselves. And so it's like a little kind of like proverb or something I should imagine. Um, I don't know where they're from, um, whether they're created by um, Diego, I'm not sure. Or whether they come from some kind of spiritual tradition um but they are nice you know to focus on and these cards as well would be good to use for meditation especially with a small kind of messages um on the top on the bottom and you've got the number of the cards as well so they're easy to find in two little carry shells um each side and you will see Go. I still ain't found that number one, have I? Probably uh, hidden somewhere amongst these cards. And then we're on to the last few. Just get these out. No, because it's number two. That's why. So I'm not going to find number one. Right, there you go. So basically, there is the positive and as negative aspect of the, that particular deity. So the positive is those who have the Orisha's blessing are destined to enjoy happiness. And the negative, negative is the dangers of the world are always lurking. And so, obviously, I'll show you how you use the cards um, when I showed you the moon phase cards. So, you get four, four, waxing, waning, and uh, uh, new. And what you do is you pick, um, you, well, you shuffle the cards. I'm just going to do a one pull. Um, and the moon cards are good because it shows you where you are at with that particular kind of situation at the time um, you're pulling the cards. So let's just like quickly pick one. So we've got a positive one. And so this is actually the one I had last night. And so we got, we have got erosion and knowledge is the greatest wealth one can have. And so then you just pick a moon card 
I'll just pick that one there. And we've got full moon. So obviously the energy is really, really potent at this particular time. Um, so number seven in the book, uh, and you've got the keywords are analytical, intelligent, great rationalizer, skill with words, especially writing, quick thinking, good advisor, eloquent and well-spoken strategist. Thinking, reflecting, studying, meditating, intelligence and the ability to rationalize situations, decide the best way forward are your greatest strengths. So um, obviously this is a message and then there's an empowering ritual as well. Um, you know, about using on a waxing moon Saturday, using a pencil, write all your best wishes on a piece of white paper in honour of Ori, your spiritual head, Orisha. Make a hole on the top of a melon and put the paper inside, drizzling with honey and olive oil. Light a seven-day white candle and fix it to the hole. Then put the melon with its candle in a safe place above head height until the candle is burnt. On the next day, dispatch the melon into the sea or a river. Um so yeah there you go i mean they're nice and i mean i like the fact that you've got the the shadow meditations as well so on the negative aspect of this particular one is that one and so the shadow meditation is it seems that people around me are always making me responsible for them and their obligations as if i was in charge of their lives how many times have I put myself in roles that are not mine, assuming positions where I'd rather they did things my way instead of letting them do things their way, which I believe to be wrong. So there is a meditation and there's obviously lots of information um, about the negative aspect of this particular one as well. So there you go. Um, it'll be interesting to see all your comments below. Um, I give this deck definitely full marks for its usability um you know you can widen your knowledge it's a good starting point i think you know to find out different you know belief systems um you know but so like yeah it, it works as an oracle deck for me well kind of a, a meditative deck for me um i will be using it and it'd be great to see your guys opinions um underneath so tomorrow i will be actually doing a walkthrough of this other lovely deck which i was sent for review and this is the sacred feminine oracle also by rock paul um and this is a really lovely deck i think this one's going to be super super popular as well um especially with the female market um stay tuned because i'm uploading a video later of my opinions of this deck um which has just come out mass market by high house and this is the fifth fifth spirit tarot which was originally an indie deck um i've been using this deck for the last uh four days and i want uh want to share my opinions and what i think of it so thank you so much guys this has been lovely i hope you're all okay um and I will speak to you all later. So have a lovely day. Take care and send in love always. Bye guys.